So next up is Eric Baum. He's an AI researcher and author of What is Thought? All right. All right, I'm going to try and answer uh, two questions today. Uh, first is, what is understanding? And I'm going to tell you it's a program with radically different properties and origin than the kinds of programs you're used to seeing. And then I'm going to ask, tell you uh, how we can build such programs. It's obviously an ambitious agenda, but I'm going to try and tell you that if we follow a few principles, the consequences of a few principles with dogged determination, we can get there. And you know the difference between me with a principle in my teeth and a hockey mom, lipstick. <laughs> so the first objective is, what is understanding? Now, I'm going to define understanding by saying you understand a domain if you can retrieve and rapidly assemble programs that solve new problems as they arise in the domain. This is obviously rather different than the kinds of programs you're used to seeing because those are written to attack programs that you've thought about in advance and they really don't handle new problems as they come along. Of course, when you're thinking in your mind, I'm talking about mental programs, but if you believe in strong AI, those are equivalent to some programs we can have on our computer and I'd like to know what they look like. So here is a picture, for example, that you probably haven't seen. This is a Rube Goldberg device. But if I gave you a few minutes, you could analyze this device and say how it works or why it doesn't work. And if it was broken, you could fix it. So this is a new domain that you'd pr produce a mental program to solve. And in order to do that, you'd have to summon up modules that know about analyzing causality and can analyze, for example, what happens when a rock pushes down on a toothpaste tube, which is probably something you've never seen before, and would know that if the, t if the cap, figure out that if the cap was still on it, it wouldn't work. Modules that exploit real underlying structure in the world in repeatable ways that you can put together to solve new problems, we call meaningful modules. They have meaning by virtue of the fact that they exploit real structure in, in the world. Here's another example. You probably have never done air traffic control, but here's an air traffic control map. And if I gave you some months, you could build a mental program, just as you could learn to play any other video game and, and solve air traffic control problems. That's a problem I'd like to know how to solve, if only because we spend $2 billion a year on air traffic control salaries, and air traffic control delays cost us $40 billion a year. So where do understanding programs come from? They come, I'm going to say, from a principle called Occam's razor. Here's a picture of Willem of Occam, who first formulated a previous version of this principle back in the 14th century. So if I give you a sequence and ask you 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, what comes next? You're going to say 14 by following Occam's razor. You're going to use sort of the simplest hypothesis. And I claim that for programs, the same thing is basically true. If you find a simple, a like, concise enough program that solves enough problems in a complex domain, the only way that you can have such a concise program, that it can possibly even exist if there's underlying structure in that domain, and it's composed of meaningful modules that exploit that structure, and it puts them together to solve all the various many problems you've made it solve. And if it does that, it'll put them together to solve all the new problems that come along, or at least a lot of them. So to further understand this, let's talk about the two examples we have of understanding systems, systems in the world that understand. The first one is your mind, but another one is evolution, or the genome. And both of these understanding systems come from the fact that evolution built this incredibly concise genome that solved so many problems, basically went through 10 to the 44th creatures. Um, and because of that, it's built out of meaningful modules that it puts together to solve various things. And because of that, you can see this because a very high fraction of mutations create meaningful mutations. So for example, here's a picture of two flies. One of them is an ordinary fly with two wings, and the other one is a mutation that has four wings. This is a meaningful mutation. It's very functional. Here's another example. Here's a, a fly, a mutated fly, which has legs for its, a, instead of antennas. Well, that might not be too useful, but it's clearly in some sense meaningful. So I would argue that according to my definition of producing programs to solve new problems, in any case, evolution does that. Evolution understands the same as you do. It does a rapid search over meaningful possibilities. So you can think faster than evolution because your brain hardware in some sense is faster. But evolution has had a billion years and it went through a huge number of creatures and in some sense it's devoted a lot more thought and understanding to problems than you ever will. And therefore it has, by doing that, it has designed you, your mind, and your body, which we can't, we're not capable of, of, of designing. 
Here's another example to understand this, limbs. If you asked engineers to design limbs, they'd probably write down a specification for the bone structure and a specification for the muscles and another one for the, for the, for the uh, vascular system, another one for the nerve system, and you'd have you know, a freight train full of, of, of blueprints like you have for a Mirage jet. But if you did that, then if you made it, it, it wouldn't solve new problems, and if you made a mutation, it wouldn't evolve because you'd have to mutate the bone structure and the muscles, se separately the muscles in a similar way, in, in a beneficial way, and separately the, the nerves, and <coughs> the proponents of, of intelligent design would be correct. But that's not the way it's designed. Because of uh, Occam's razor, because it's designed so concisely, you have a program for building out uh, uh, bones of limbs that builds them out in a limb-like fashion, so if you mutate it, you're likely to get some other limb with joints and whatnot. And then the muscles aren't really specified at all. They specify to go out, search out the bones, and attach themselves to them. And the muscles that uh, are doing useful things, they grow so that uh, rowers have big hearts. And the nerves go out and attach to the muscles and search around in ways to get them to work well. And the vascular system's got an incredibly concise program. It just grows out, and any time a cell is screaming, I need oxygen, it goes and attaches there. So because of this incredibly concise programming, you get this system that can mutate. If you mutate the bone structure from a cat's paw to a bat's wing, everything goes along functionally, and it works just great. And it can do new tasks. You can learn to play a violin. So I've told you essentially what understanding is. Understanding is a program that can solve new problems as they come along, and it does this by virtue of Occam's razor, by having a bunch of meaningful modules that it can put together. So now I'm going to ask how we can build such programs. Now, people have tried to build programs like this in a few ways. One is by direct simulations of evolution, where they take programs and they apply them to a bunch of programs and they apply them to tasks and they keep the ones that work better and they mutate them and, and basically try and simulate evolution, evolutionary programming. That's never going to work unless you add something because evolution, you can get started, but evolution just has so much more power in, in its hardware than you ever will that you're just going to scratch the surface. Another thing people have tried to do is to write these programs by hand. But again, you can't do that. It's too hard to solve these problems that evolution has solved. Evolution is smarter than you. It's had more power and it's built the, a big structure and also at the lowest levels that, that is just too hard to solve. Now, if you're trying to build it by hand, another thing you could try and do is introspect. And that's a reasonable thing to try. But the problem with that is that you think, you introspect at the meaning level. You think about these modules in terms of their meaning, but you cannot look into how they're coded. So think about a, a program that's outside your head that you're using. Microsoft Word, say. You fire up Microsoft Word, and you know why you're doing that, and you know what you're going to do with it and how to use it, but you do not know what the code is in there. And the same thing is true for your mental concepts. You know why you're using them and how you're using them. You know their meaning, but you don't know how they're computed. So it, what's the answer here? If we can't do it automatically and we can't do it uh, uh, by hand, the answer is to do a collaboration of man and machine, where we build a system for robust programming that allows people to enter all the things that people can do. For example, a vast amount of information you can get from introspection and lets the machine do everything that people can't do, the solving hard problems to build the, co the detailed code. So you can introspect. You can introspect at the meaning level and say a lot of stuff. So you can, the, the, this CAD tool that I'm going to build will allow people to code in terms of concepts that they want to code in terms of, but they can't wrote the, write the code for. The code for these concepts will be written by module constructors, automatic systems that will create procedures to compute these, these concepts. Now, this is, in principle, straightforward to do because, for example, we could do it by evolutionary programming. You can supply examples of these concepts so you can run evolutionary programming to do them. Now, I told you evolutionary programming was too slow, but that was for the whole problem. You might imagine that if you break the problem down into little bite-sized pieces, uh, you can then apply evolutionary programming on them and, and make a, a lot more progress. So the CAD tool, each time you solve one of these problems, get a satisfactory program, will encapsulate it in an instruction that you can then write code with or that you can feed into the next program, and you're going to build up a hierarchic, meaningful structure. Now, that's pretty good, but in order to make this really work, I think we need a number of components that, I, that I've been thinking about, and I think I hopefully have time to tell you a little bit about four of them. The first one that you need is a domain simulation. When you think about the world, you think in terms of images, you think in terms of mental models, and not just in terms 
of the, your conscious level thought, but the concepts themselves are all accessing mental models and doing, simu and, and doing, doing calculations on, on internal mental models. The only reason you can understand the world, the only reason the world is understandable, is it has underlying simple structure. And if you build a domain simulation, it can represent that simple structure and give it to you for free. So you get inductive bias that is huge for everything. So here's an example of a very simple domain simulation, a game board. The game board is a simulation because it represents moves as you make them and they have consequences. In chess, it's easy, you might just capture something, but in Go, it's more dramatic because a whole thing of the, of the board might, might vanish or whatever, you capture a large group. So the, the game board represents the laws of physics. And it also, incidentally, has the, the, the Euclidean structure, two dimensions for, for game boards, but for other simulations, you know, three-dimensional laws of physics with causality and everything else. And it's easy to build simulations, not just for game boards, where you do think ahead using these, but it, for, for naive physics or for air traffic control. So all of the modules are based on these. Now, another thing we can build that sort of shows the power of the of domain simulations used in this way with all your modules accessing them are, is what I call a relevance-based planner. So if you look at, the, at the, this a Rube Goldberg picture and start trying to do things here, you do planning in a certain way which is all causally based. You'll form a high-level plan, a strategy, and then you'll go through and, and tactically fix things. Um, uh, and as you fix things, you will propagate things ca causally again. If, if something that you're trying to fix interacts with something else and you need to fix that first, you go fix that first. And if that needs to fix something else, you go fix that first. And everything goes in sort of a relevance-based way that's purely causal. Well, you can access actually what you, how you do that to a large extent because that is at the meaning level. What you can't do is say how the, the, the concepts, the modules that you use at the tactic level are, are, are built, but those we can build uh, using, uh, using module constructors. Okay, here's another component, which is artificial economies. If you go and you try and write a huge program, a huge complex program, to some extent you're doing something like what the Politburo tried to do in, in controlling the, the Soviet economy. It's really too big a task for, for people. But the market economy can organize the performance of millions of people to bring your breakfast to your table and they are just seeking their their own internal they're just seeking you know their own reward um, they don't even know about the ultimate goal but by simulating uh, economies we can build we can harness this power and and organize programs and by having them evolve the, the agents within this economy mutating and evolving we can get the, we can have build very powerful module constructors that we can use not only at, to build the internal concepts, but then at the next level, and at the next level, so that essentially at the end of the day you have economies on economies on economies. Uh, I guess in the, first, the second talk of the day, we, we, the first talk, not interview, we heard something about these kind of metasystems, and, and, and we can build this kind of stuff. The final component that I want to mention are scaffolds. We're looking to find components that we can put together through various kinds of evolutionary programming techniques. And we can think about how to do that so that we have chunks that we put together instead of putting things together on sort of primitive instructions and make a, a lot of progress. So I told you, for example, limbs, not just limbs, but biology at all levels, is based on, on searches. You've got a, a, it's broken up into a number of little search programs. So you can build in a search program that says you're going to do a search and then the only part that has to be adjusted is sort of the goal of that search or maybe what agents it's searching over. And, and build things out of that, it gives you a big head start. So, let me conclude. Um, I told you that understanding requires to be able to produce programs to solve new problems as they come along. To do that, you have to assemble a bunch of meaningful modules. So you need a collection of meaningful modules that you can assemble new programs out of so you can do it very rapidly. And we can build these meaningful modules by using module constructors and this CAD tool and, and various components that I've mentioned. Remember, I answered two questions. What is understanding? I told you it was a program with radically different properties in origin. And how can we build it? And I'm Eric Baum. Thank you. One question. Sure. One question. Question? The floor do? Question. So if I understand correctly, human elements is still the main driver behind this. It's just everything is encapsulated upon itself to eventually evolve towards bigger constructs or bigger superstructs. 
No, so I'm, I mean, I'm trying to build, I'm trying to, a lot of it's going to, oh, repeat the question. He said, if I understand correctly, human intelligence is still the big driver upon this, but everything is driving to, to bigger constructs. Well, so uh, I, I, I'm going to use everything I can, right? I, wanna, I, I think the, the, this is a hard task, so we have to build a system that allows us to interact and build the kind of structure that you need. So I'm going to do it partially by observing what evolution has built and partially by thinking about what I want to build, but also a lot uh, in terms of uh, introspection, what, what, what I think is there. But the actual code has to be built by machine because people aren't capable of it. I think I'm done. Yeah? Great. Thank you.